Hello, I am Babu Karsi, welcoming you to another edition of The Viewpoint coming your way on QTV. If you join us for the first time, The Viewpoint is a special edition that looks into the latest happenings with your people, of course, in and around the globe. On this special edition, I have the pleasure to welcome Mr. Mohamed Apapanjai, newly elected to lead the People's Progressive Party, PPP. Of course, a party that many will say ushered in us into independence. Mr. Njai, congratulations and welcome to The Viewpoint. Thank you very much, Babakar, and uh, it's a pleasure to be, uh, to be uh, part of this great um, uh, TV station and also to uh, be part of this um, uh, talk show. Mohamed Papanjai, you know, tell us a bit about your background. We know you worked, you know, the, you know, I mean, you in fact, you led a, a, a sports in at a association, okay. the basketball, you know, the, the American embassy, you know, you, you name it. But tell us a bit about your background. Uh, in summary, um, I will just uh, say that um, I was born and brought up in Banjul, mm -hmm. then moved to uh, Bakau, and I'm from the family of the late Alan Sanjay, and um, I have my master's in agricultural econ economics. And uh, I came back and uh, I worked for the uh, Department of Planning uh, under the Minister of Agriculture. I was the principal planner there and my job was then was to look at uh, projects coming into Cambia and then to see whether they really meet the uh, developmental objectives of the, uh, of the country, of the Minister of Agriculture. And I, also, I was also in charge of the um, uh, M&E, uh, which is basically monitoring and, and evaluating projects that were coming into the country and uh, they were being implemented by the, uh, in the Gambia. Then I went and worked for the National Women Farmers Association, NAUFA. Uh, it's, a, it's a body under the then CRS. Okay. And my job was there to uh, help the women farmers um, uh, not only grow sesame seeds, but to help them um, uh, sell it overseas. Because what we found out then was that um, a lot of the time, uh, middlemen would come and buy the uh, sesame seeds from them, but at a very disadvantaged price. And uh, our job then was to bring all these seeds together and, uh, and sell it uh, overseas, and which helped the women farmers to um, gain more out of the sesame seeds. And also we trained them on how to add value to, to the sesame seeds. There, from there, I went and worked for the um, Gamba Investment Promotion and Free Zones Agency. I was director of investment promotion and marketing, and I had contributed a lot in bringing some of these uh, projects, uh, uh, companies are uh, currently on the ground. And there I learned how to interact with people overseas, how to uh, get investors to come to and invest in Gambia. If you look at uh, during that time of uh, development, there were a lot of, uh, press, a lot, a lot of negative press on, on the Gambia and um, the Gambia was perceived as an unfriendly investment destination. But I was able to um, uh, talk to investors to come and invest in Gambia. That's a sk uh, skill set that I think is currently helping me in the mm. knowing how to talk to international donors and international potential partners. From there, I left and I went and uh, started uh, Digital Planet. I had a partnership with some Senegalese, and we brought Samsung products in Gambia. And I think okay. um, eventually, Mohamed Jab bought the company out. And um, there, my job was really to um, market the Samsung products. But not, not only that, what I tried to achieve was um, to get students who have never been to school, who, has never, who have never been to uh, after high school, they've never had a chance to get a job. Okay. And um, they were from high school, I brought them on board, trained them, and now they are working. And some of them are actually um, high in, uh, in, in, in the hierarchy of the, of, of the um, work ladder in most of the companies. And I'm pleased to say that I saw at least about five or six of them today in, in, in the building here. Yeah, so great. there, my job was really to empower the young people. And uh, those are skills that I think uh, if anybody wants to lead a party or lead a, um, a, um, a government, you have to have those skill sets. And mm -hmm. then um, during that time also I left and I went and worked for the American Embassy. And I think that's where I had most of my productive life. Uh, I inter uh, interacted with the media, the journalists. I interacted with the, the artists. Uh, I interacted uh, with the youth in sports, dis uh, pe dif differently able people, persons. So. I had I did a lot of things um, uh, from the uh, whilst I was at American Embassy, and um, it was during that time also I became the president of the Basketball Association. And uh, when I was taken over the account, we only had seventy six dollars or sixty seven dollars. I cannot remember. Mm -hmm. Within a year or two, we were able to raise uh, almost half a million dollars. And um, basketball, since then, uh, um, just uh, became one of the most prominent sports in the Gambia. Those skills are also very important. And I, I'm also a businessman. Right. I also have my own NGO. Mm. I, um, uh, I do a lot of voluntary work. So, Mr. Njai, 
comes with over um, uh, 30 years of uh, working in different sectors of the Gambia. Um, particularly uh, business. Business, business, business yes, <laughs> but particularly really it's more about um, uh, being a technocrat. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, uh, most of them are uh, working career, I, I was a technocrat. Uh, the, uh, with the government, with the NGOs, with the international organizations. So yes, I blend both. both. Yeah, that's Papanjai for you. In case uh, you don't know him, now he and is the I'm flag bearer. I'm also <laughs> a good striker. I used to be a, good, a very good footballer. Footballer, really. Yes. <laughs> well, he's the flag bearer of the uh, PPP party. Um, um, well, from the you know the sum summarize sum the summary that you've given us, nothing like politics. Why politics? Um, politics, even in your household, you do politics there. Mm. And even um, in the office setting, there's politics there. Politics is surrounded. Wherever we go, we have to do politics. And um, uh, even when the, there was this, when the, the last elections, when it came, we all were fed up. We all wanted to see change. And that's where we focused, refocused our attention from the household politics to more organized politics, whereby um, uh, we wanted to see a change uh, in the government. And that's when we all started uh, doing our, sm our small quota. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of us, we actually started printing T-shirts and giving out to people at the, uh, from my um, uh, office at Global Education Center. And all along, uh, we've been uh, talking to young people that uh, you, it's your right to vote. And uh, the one thing I forgot to mention was that um, it was through my uh, effort that we created the American Corners. And that was a, a center where young people w would go and talk about politics, would go and uh, interact and talk about the, the, uh, the ideas. So that in itself was a political move that I did and um, uh, it paid off at the end. So politics has always been in me, but uh, politics in the way we see it now is different. Mm -hmm. That one started um, uh, after the, um, um, uh, the presidential election and I felt that uh, towards, uh, uh, now what can I do for Gambia? And um, I said, um, one of the things that I can do, I have a lot of people that I have uh, worked with, and now I want to go and um, help contribute and develop KMC. That's when I entered the mayorship race. Uh, the that was going to be my next question. Yes. After the presidential election, we came to the mayoral election. Yeah. So when we saw Papa was not very confident of himself. He decided to you know, force himself into the UDP, who later rejected him. You came as an independent. Okay, I, <laughs> I was not, never rejected. Oh, um, really? uh, I, I, was, I didn't force to go to UDP. Um, I did a strategic move. Um, I went there because of certain reasons which I have discussed and discussed. But I went to the UDP and um, honestly I just want to thank the UDP people because they are the ones who f for the first time introduced me into politics and uh, started showing me what, 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 is all, what is real politics all about. Mm. But then in the process we had um, uh, difference in opinion. We had, um, I mean if you know me, mm -hmm. I'm a very strong person when it comes to what I believe in. and. Um, I uh, had a fallout and I, uh, there were a series of letters I wrote to them to say that um, the way the primary were going, I'm not comfortable with it. And if we don't change, I don't have any option. But how was it, it going? Um, it going? Um, that is history. I don't want to talk about that because now I really want to concentrate on uh, what PPP can do for, for the Gambians uh, because the water has been spilled already. So yes, we, we um, uh, didn't agree on certain things. And I wrote, I, I, res uh, I resigned from the, uh, from the UDP and um, that, that on its own was a bold move because UDP then were, they, are, they were the, uh, the, the strongest party and they had the majority and I dared challenge them and I went independent and that on its own was something that uh, most people mm. wouldn't have done. Going independent you already yeah. knew they were the biggest, right? Oh yes, they were the biggest. I mean everybody, they had the, I mean they won the, um, uh, they won the council election, most of the, most of the seats in the council election mm. were won by them and uh, the MP elections also they won, uh, was won by them. But to me, that was not the issue. The issue was, I have a conviction, I have a belief that uh, uh, these are things that we need to do. And these are some things we need to do in KMC. And um, based on that, I went independent. And a lot of people then were scared. I said, hey, um, uh, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in the people that are supporting you. And Alhamdulillah, I came third. And um, third was very significant for an uh, independent candidate who had to raise his, his own funds who went against uh, two established uh, parties and then uh, I came third and then I actually did, uh, did better than some of the parties. I, mean well, I, I must admit that that was a great yes. achievement, you so know, just uh, two months of campaign, two, exactly. standing as an yes, independent yes, candidate. Yes. So I'm, you know. I'm, I'm proud that uh, my team did well. Mm. We did well and uh, we, we didn't lose, we came third. That's what I kept telling people. Mm. And that was really continued to propel me to continue into politics. 
from independence after the mayoral elections, we saw Papa going into the PPP. In fact, others, mm. you know, the diaspora says, you know, Papa is flip-flopping. We don't even know where he belongs to. He's okay. just hungry for power, <laughs> you know. And um, mm? um, again, people, a lot of people don't know me as a person. Uh, they know me when they, uh, as somebody interacting with people. Um, I'm a leader that listens a lot. I'm a leader that believes in change. I'm a leader that um, uh, will include people in the, uh, in the, in the decision-making process. But then when I had to make the decisions, I would. And uh, an example was when uh, we had a neck off in, uh, in Soma, and um, uh, one of the players were, were banned uh, by the GBA. And then uh, uh, the, uh, the KMC, the, the, uh, the member, the, uh, what's it called again? The, um, Jan mm. was then the mayor of KMC and uh, they insisted that I should play that um, uh, player and I insisted no and um, then they had, a, they had the power and I said against I went and had a press conference and I said uh, the decision I'm going to take today is going to be my own decision and this player is not going to play because the rule says that he, sh he should not play and even though it's a different uh, tournament mm. and I have done I've taken the tough decisions in the past before and this this was one of them and flip-flopping how many people left parties and went to other parties? It happens every time. But yours within a short period? It doesn't matter. Um, I, UDP, if, you the, if you look at the uh, history of PPP also, um, those people that um, came from the UP, uh, within, or they came and within a, a, within a couple of months they were appointed ministers. And that's the history of the PPP. The PPP yeah. have, has, already, has always made sure that um, those who came today and those who were there for like 50, 30 years ago were equal. And uh, Sadaudo Kereba Jawara um, did that. Uh, Hassan Musa Kamara was from another party, and when he came, he made him minister. Dutal was from another party. When he came, he made, he made them all ministers. So that is the philosophy of PPP, which really attracted me the most. And um, they are a party that uh, believes believe in inclusiveness. And uh, no single um, uh, uh, sector or no single tribe, no single party from a different region will claim that PPP is this is this sector or this religion or this tribe so what are the similarities between udp the party that you were before and you know because you said i've uh, read one of your interviews where you said after the mayoral elections you know some parties approach you but you rejected mm -hmm. them but what are the similarities between udp and PPP? I, I, I would I would like now moving forward i don't want to talk about udp i would say yeah, that but there are some similarities yeah, if you reject all the parties okay. and join the ppp udp mm -hmm. uh, ppp all parties emerge from ppp the strongest supporters of uh, UDP are actually uh, PP, former PPP members. Mm -hmm. And I will be reaching out to all of them, even though they're at U in UDP, I will reach out to them and say, listen, um, uh, your, the, the building that was built by your father, uh, or by yourself, was burned down during the 22 years, and now we are back, we b we're rebuilding it. So come back to your, the, the, the building that your father built, and um, uh, let's make it great again. So I'm going to reach out um, mm -hmm. to uh, all of them and uh, hope if I reach out to 20, I might get 10 to, to come, back, come back and join the PPP. Is it true that uh, you were offered a role in the PPP? Uh, you rejected it? Uh, before um, PPP, um, I have a history with PPP. Um, immediately after the, uh, the uh, my mayoral election, um, uh, no, immediately after I left UDP, I had a meeting with some of the executive members and I told them now, uh, ideally I should be in PPP. But strategically, um, let me continue to be an independent candidate because an independent candidate will take from different parties and they will support you. And uh, after hoping that I was going to win the uh, win the mayorship, I will um, go back to, to, to the, I'll, I'll go back to PPP. And um, it paid it paid off because at the end, when even when I came third, um, there are a lot of people from other parties who continue to support me. And those people that are, that are supporting me now, I went with them to the PPP. So it was a strategic decision and. Um, even during the um, uh, the MP elections and the uh, council elections, I was I was uh, helping some of the uh, councillors and some of the MP. And so, the so it's through the the, the dev approach you to, to, um, to the party. No, I went to them. I went to Instead them. Instead, you went to yes, them. Yes, I went to them. And um, my father was PPP, and uh, he's, he has contributed so much in the in, in the development of PPP. And my household, everybody was PPP. It was when PPP was banned that UDP was created, and some of these people migrated to UDP. Mm. So it's is there. So I'm not the only person who has uh, moved from one party to an another. But Alhamdulillah, I'm very comfortable at PPP now. And uh, we are the new face of PPP. And uh, the button was successfully handed from the old peop older generation to the younger generation. And now it's our responsibility to make sure that the PPP grows 
uh, it's our responsibility to make sure that we reach out to the young people uh, because a lot of young people they don't know PPP and uh, but some of them they know Papa and Jai and uh, have strategies and means of reaching out to them to okay the old PPP was there is the almost um, uh, most of them are all, all, almost very too old to contribute uh, to PPP but then this is the new phase listen to me and this is our agenda and this is what we want to do and if they listen to me and they believe in me they'll come and join PPP so that is my um, that is what uh, what my mission is all about now let's now talk about the controversial elections uh, at the end of 2018 <laughs> you had your elections you yes. know let me first ask you know what role did OJ play in you know bringing you up as a candidate OJ did not play any role. Um, uh, we all applied as uh, as, as uh, members of the PPP. You all applied. Yes, you myself, you know, yeah? myself, um, uh, and uh, Honor Bibi Dabo also uh, applied, and, and um, we 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 went to elections, and uh, I won. Um, it's normal in any elections. Uh, there's going to be a loser, and uh, some of the losers will not take it easily. And um, my message during the uh, Congress was very simple. Uh, when I went to delegates, I told them two things. PPP, you vote for a, for a face. There are two options: voting for a face, or voting to survive to for the party to 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 survive. If you're voting for a face, um, that is BB because he has a face. He has been in the party for. You don't have a face. No, no. I, I have a face with the young people. Oh. Yes, but BB has a face mm -hmm. in PPP. He says he he has been vice president for over ten years, and he has been minister for 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 a number of years. So he has a face. A PPP, but for the party to survive, mm. I told him is a, a, a younger person who has more connection with the with, with the with the younger generation than somebody who has been out of the country for 22 years. And they listened to me and they voted for me. And that, that was a simple message I gave to them, mm. because if you even if you look at the delegates at, at the Congress, mm. almost 80 percent of those delegates were very young people. So automatically, I knew if I sent the right signals to them, they would listen to me, and they did. And I won, uh, won him, and, and uh, the election was very transparent. It was, I think it was the only party that actually did elections at the, cong at the Congress. We invited the IEC, and uh, both camps had their representatives in, 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 the, in, the, in the election process, and they vetted everything. And then uh, it was on TV, and I won. And um, what, I, what I just want to tell um, uh, the baby camp is that elections, you either win or lose. And uh, at the end of the PPP, is greater than any, any of one of us. We have to move on and uh, come together and build the, uh, the PPP again. And the, the fight is not amongst ourselves. It's for us to prepare ourselves. So come 2021, we will be able to also have a firmer footing in uh, deciding uh, the fate of the Gambia. Talking of Bibi, uh, don't you think, you know, some of what you would have been like said, hey, don't you think Papa is too young to lead a party of such? Maybe he could have still be behind Bibi, learn, get the experience, prepare for 2021? Um, is it not too early? Um, uh, really, if sometimes people call me young, I'm not that young. Uh, in politics, I might be young. But if you look at the yeah, history, in the political sense, yes, yeah. if you look at the, the history, history of PPP, um, uh, Sardauda um, uh, became prime minister, I think, at the age of 36, I'm not too sure, and then uh, president at 41. And uh, the likes of OJ uh, became, uh, became um, uh, MPs at a very young, in the 30s. And by 36, he became uh, a minister. So PPP has a tradition of bringing young people young into four. Mm. Yes. And uh, like I will give an example. Um, when Sadaudo was uh, nominated to run for under the PPP ticket, I mean, not a lot of people knew him. He was a veterinarian. He did a lot of extensive work in the rural areas. He came, the structure molded him for him to win. And um, the current city president also, when he uh, when he uh, decided to run for the flagship uh, uh, to go against uh, Jame, not a lot of people knew him. He was molded within a couple of months. He went and and won the election. So it's about the person and the structure that surrounds the person. That's what matters. And um, those young ages, uh, the, the president and, um, uh, and uh, the, the president I mentioned at that age, the number of people that had. And what I have now is totally different. I have more contacts. With, I have a lot of followers. And um, uh, I think I'm really ready now to, to engage young people more so that they can, um, they can come and join the PPP. So age is not really experience. Yes, the experience I have is multifaceted. Okay. I, I think now we need leaders that can talk to all different types of uh, sectors. 
they can talk to the private sector, they can talk to technocrats, they can talk to the international, uh, international organization, they can talk to the young people. Uh, a president should be able to go to a, a rap concert and, 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 be, and feel that, yes, I feel comfortable with these people. That was we, that's what we're lead, looking for. We're looking for a leader that can reach out to all sectors. And uh, that leader is me. Before reaching out to the people, mm. you used to reach out to your own people at the PPP. With uh, the current division, uh, what mechanisms are you going to use to make so you unite the party? Um, division is, like I said, in every election you will have uh, people from different camps. And, and uh, I think now the, the, the wounds are, uh, are fresh, so eventually we will reach out to all of them and um, uh, tell them that PPP is greater than all, greater than all of us and um, it's a process um, uh, some of these things you cannot just force them and um, uh, we'll give them a, co a couple of weeks until everything subsides and then it's natural for us to go back and tell them hey listen this is what, this is what happened and uh, we need to move forward and the lucky thing is that uh, Sadaura Kerabajawa is still alive and some of the other PPP um, uh, Founding fathers are still alive um, uh, I'm sure they will uh, do the mediation so that uh, both parties are uh, come together and uh, we continue to promote PPP again. Have you had any discussions with him, Sadauda, since? Uh, I uh, went after the elections, I went to his ho home and um, uh, he prayed for me and then um, uh, and, and said that uh, the PPP should continue to be one big family. So um, that's what he did, he prayed for me. And he mentioned um, some stories about himself and my father, and which I never knew about. But um, we had a great time and uh, we pray for his, his um, uh, long life and good health. As we speak, the chances of the IEC suspending PPP is very slim, just like what we saw with the NCP. Um, Alaji Yaya Sise is announced by some members and executive of the PPP as the interim chairman. You know, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know we're having two, two parties leading. No, no, PPP we don't right have now. two parties. Um, let's, let's be clear with the constitution of the PPP. The constitution says the delegates are the supreme body. They would vote in the executive they would vote in the executive and they did and they did and it was transparent and the whole world witnessed that elections so if they have if they want to start their own uh, party or they, they they're not happy with what whatever is going on let them let them come 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 and we sit and discuss it but they don't have any legal right to say that they're the interim um, uh, interim uh, ch ch um, uh, president or the interim secretary, they don't have any right. Mm. And IEC was there, and we we have submitted our name to the IEC. And our case is different from the U uh, from the NCP. NCP because the NCP held two different congresses. But As this is the line that they are also no, no, taking. No, 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 they yeah. cannot because we've mm. already held the congress, and IEC has approved us. So they cannot take another congress. If they want, they can do an, uh, any, uh, they can do something else. They have the right to do whatever they want to do, but IEC has um, uh, has recognized the the current executive, and they were there. And Baby himself, in when he was giving his closing remark, uh, said the election was free, fair, and transparent, and that I am the uh, um, the secretary general and the party leader, and then um, he is not a sore loser. So um, he congratulated me. The same thing uh, went to, uh, um, when. Honorable Al Al Yaisis also gave, gave his statement. Uh, statement. He also uh, congratulated me and um, said that um, uh, together we can develop the, uh, the PPP again. So they've mentioned it. I mean, it was there. It's, it's on record. Uh, and they, they said that um, I'm the winner. So if they go back and uh, want to change it, um, I think they should wait uh, in the next three years when we have a Congress again and they can put up a candidate. But for now, the eyes was there and was, uh, was agreed up upon that our team are, are the current executive. But away from the brouhaha on your party's aspect, is Papa Njai ready to lead this country? Papa Njai for now is concentrating on the, um, building the weak structures within the PPP. Papa Njai is really concentrating on rebuilding the base of PPP. Papa Njai really wants, uh, Papa Njai and his team wants to reach out to the young people, the women, to say that uh, PPP is a party that you, you should listen to and, and be part of it. So come 2021, that's a different ball game. But now, wh what I keep telling leaders, what I keep telling people when I discuss is that you should not look for something in the future when you have not really done the job now. If I want to look for, to, to lead the, uh, the PPP into the next election, the work starts now. I have to make sure the structure is in place. I have to make sure that the, the party expands. I have to make sure that um, uh, things that will make a party win elections are in place. 
then come come uh, uh, 2021 um, when we decide on who is going to be the flag bearer if i'm ready and i think i i think and i think that i can lead the party then i put my name into the into the box again and say i want to be the party leader uh, the, the uh, flag bearer but now i'm not a flag bearer and now my concentration are on building ppp again I was going to say, you know, we are now contesting for the mayoral elections uh, that stops within the KMC. This is about a party that, you know, seeks to get votes nationwide, you know. You're hardly known compared to BB nationwide. Maybe at the KM, yes. Everybody knows Papanjai. Um, what mechanism <laughs> are you going to use reaching out to the, you know, length and breadth of the If you country? walk down the street mm. and ask 60 percent of the population, which, which, who are the young people, mm. who is BB Dabo and who is Papanjai, give me the answer. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you're a young person. <laughs> yeah, I am. No, no. I know BB Dabo, I yes. know Papanjai. Yes. yes. And 60% um, of the Gambian population mm. know Papanjai, Papanja, not BB Dabo. Or even if they know BB Dabo, they know, they know him through history, but they've not interacted. They've not seen any recent, recent um, activities of, of, of BB Dabo. For 22 years, he has been silent. And uh, for 22 years, I've been around, I've interacted. So the voting population, the people, that matters are the young people, 60% of the population. On top of that 60%, you have young adults mm. who are educated, like myself, who are part of that 60%. You're talking about 80% of the population now who know or have heard about Papanja and his team. So this notion of people don't know me, uh, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. And, uh, and um, wait until uh, we go out and, uh, and, uh, and do our, 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 our tours and um, uh, uh, reaching out to the people. Then you see a different picture. And the same thing was said to me when I was doing my mayoral election that um, Ken Hamun Papanja, nobody knows Papanja, but when I came out, and um, it was a different case. I can't wait to see. Um, what plans do you have for this country if you were given the opportunity to lead? Can? Okay. Um, what we will do as a party is that um, uh, we'll be coming out with our socio-economic uh, agenda for the, for the nation. Uh, but personally, I'm passionate about certain things. Um, I'm passionate about uh, reinvesting more, more of our time, energy, and investment in the productive sectors, the core sectors that we think that Gambia has comparative advantage in. And this is the fisheries, the tourism, agriculture. Because if we develop those areas, really, uh, our reliance on um, uh, um, uh, importing like chicken, uh, like uh, rice will go down. Because currently we have an a, a, a account deficit and uh, we rely heavily on uh, imports of goods and service. We rely on importing of importation of chicken, eggs and things like that. Why can't we invest a little bit more in, in this um, sector so that at least our dependence on the, um, uh, these important items uh, would go down? And... Um, in the process also, we will create job, uh, will double job creation. That is very important, um, uh, the, 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 the productive, productive sectors which I mentioned. But also education is very important. Um, I remember uh, when we were in high school, at um, uh, grade, grade six, uh, common trans, you will be able to write and read and uh, speak fluently. But now it's not there. It's uh, it, 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 it that's a problem. And I was going to say yes. you said young people, but yeah. young people, you know, unfortunately yes. the results coming out is not favorable. Not favorable. So why <laughs> will you give them the mantle to lead the country? When yes, but, <laughs> I, but yes, we have to give them chance. Oh, okay. Uh, and I believe that um, somebody not speaking good English doesn't make him a dumb person. Mm. Okay. What we need to do is to revisit the education system and uh, make sure that uh, at different stages in your life you assessed. And if you don't perform well, you have to stay behind and, and until you, you, you meet the minimum grade for you to be promoted to the next level. And to me, f honestly, I think that education should be free up to high school. But then, from high school now to at, at university and, and tertiary, we should, we should link our scholarships to the development agenda or development vision of the country. What I mean by that, um, let's say we want Gambia to be a financial center and a tourist destination. All this, most of the scholarship we are given out will be in those productive sectors that we want to develop further. It should not be open blanket scholarship because a leader should have a vision. And the vision, if your vision is Gamma to be, uh, to be a Singapore, Gamma to be a financial center, what are the job skills that we need in five, 10 years? Based on that now, we will start to recruit, start to train people so that they will start entering those, um, uh, those, those um, uh, uh, vacant positions. Without that, we will not move forward. And um, if you look at uh, in the world, 
most of the developed countries, most of the developed countries are the small countries. Um, uh, if you go to um, um, uh, Europe, it's Luxembourg. Um, uh, if you go to Asia, I think it's Singapore. So the small Gambia, we are blessed with the size of the country. So we have to explore, explore that and make sure that uh, we have a plan. And uh, without the plans, we cannot move forward. And I think also it's very, very important if we do not invest in infrastructure. Infrastructure here, I'm talking about the road, road networks, the seaport, seaports, not seaport, mm, the WAPs, um, uh, the, 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 the internet infrastructure, okay, the, um, uh, the uh, airways. Those are th things that I think we must invest in them. I'll give an example. Some 20 years ago, when, they tr when the road stopped at um, uh, Santa Gambia, this area was not developed. The, the, the up to Bruford. It would take you about two hours to get to Bruford. But immediately, we, we, there was a road there, boom, development came. So we have to make sure that we have a clear path, path of um, investment, investment in, uh, in infrastructure. Let's say, okay, in the budget, we say every year we'll build 10 kilometers of road. Be specific. 10 kilometers of road or 20 kilometers of road or 100 kilometers of road based on the budget, based on the money that we can raise. And then we start implementing based on those, um, uh, on those um, estimates. And then one thing I've always, always also discussed with people is that we have a very young uh, military, um, uh, military um, uh, um, uh, uh, a set of military young men and women. Why can't we use them on productive? In other countries, they have an engineer core. They have a medical core. They have all these different core. Why can't we see and say, okay, now, all the feeder roads in, 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 in KMC or in, in, in Greater Banjo or in the whole country will have an MOU with the, with the, uh, with the engineer core within the army. And so, okay, we want you to re uh, rehabilitate all the feeder roads. Every year, you need to re rehabilitate 20 kilometers or 100 kilometers. We calculate it. That's the security sector, yeah, engaging the them yeah. in. Because they, they are young and they're productive. So why can't we engage them? So we give them the contracts. But Papa, all that you're saying sounds so sweet on the ear, but uh, knowing that, you know, Gambia being one of the most depthed countries in yeah, Africa. We, that's why know? I mentioned that um, uh, wealth creation is very important. We have to invest in the areas that we think can reduce our dependence on importations. One, we have to uh, reform the civil, civil, civil service, real reforms, um, because I think uh, the civil service is a bit uh, bloated now. And... Um, I'll give an example. When I worked in one of the offices, um, uh, my immediate supervisor will come to work around nine uh, half past eight, nine o'clock, and then uh, from half pa from half past eight, uh, the person will drink, will say breakfast, and the breakfast will go up to half past ten, and then imagine you ha you have a meeting at twelve o'clock, and the person will get st start getting ready for the meetings, and then at twelve o'clock, one person will walk into the uh, into the meeting room, and all will come thirty minutes late. So by the time that meet meeting starts, it will be around one o'clock. Mm. And then you start, you do the prayers, you do the introductory remarks, everybody wants to be heard, and then it's half past one, two, two. And the whole time, Julie Jotna, so we all go out and pray. And uh, by half past two now, you start, you come back, and you want to start continuing with your work, and then there's a disagreement in the, in the meeting, and uh, it's like quarter to four. No, 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 let's adjourn it till next time. So, in effect, you will have maybe the two the hours. The system changes. Yes, yeah, so. you have two hours to walk <laughs> or even one hour. <laughs> How can a country develop? Mm. We have to change our mentality. We have to change uh, the culture of work and ethics. And where does that start? It starts from the classroom. And it starts from the leadership. We should not start meeting late. Um, if you're the head of the um, uh, 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 section, if it's 12 o'clock, be there by a quarter to 12. And anybody who comes in 30 minutes late, they, they should not enter. And um, the reason I say it's possible is when I was at the American Embassy, I made sure that our event started on time. Even if I had one person, I would start on time. And I know you interacted with me in, in several occasions. And people started in the American Embassy, they will start on time. And people started coming to, 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 to events on time. So why can't we do it outside the, uh, um, uh, outside the diplomatic, diplomatic sector? It's possible. So if fuck people must take the the the, the, the bold decision say okay from now on I'm the head of the uh, of my of my department or I'm head of my bank or I'm head of my uh, um, uh, ministry I will start meetings on time 
and I finish on time. That takes us to the current government. As you rightly mentioned at the beginning, that you know we were all yearning for the change that yeah. we wanted so badly. 2016 elections came, you know, uh, President Adam Barrow took the uh, mantle to lead this country. How will you rate his performance after two years? Um, okay, we have to separate uh, the president's office, the government, and the individual. So I will be rating the, uh, the office of the president and the government. Mm -hmm. And I think... Um, uh, Over 10? By 10? Yes, I think now it's five. Last, last, last time they interviewed me was four, but now I think it's five. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we still have one more year to go. And uh, I think with all the um, new things I'm hearing about rehabilitating the Rose and Banjul, uh, with the TRC up and running, with the different commission up and running, it will go up eventually. And um, you, you, you read the president because of the TRRC? No, not not only that, but I'm <laughs> saying some of okay, the things he, may, he mentioned in okay. his speech, uh, in his um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, how's it called? election, um, um, election, not election, say, but in uh, independent speech, yeah. he mentioned some of these things, and I'm rating based on what he said, okay. so not him as a person. So um, I think uh, by time, by the third year, um, uh, I'll come again and rate him. But um, for now, I say uh, he's like fifty percent. That's that's five. If you were to advise him, where do you think? What would you tell him to prioritize right now? Um, <laughs> um, uh, I would tell him that um, uh, he has to um, uh, be a bit more focused on the, um, uh, on, the, on the on the productive sectors. Um, uh, let's find ways of uh, reducing the imbalance in the in the in the national deficit. Um, let's invest more in the in, in the youth because he has to understand civil the civil service is not. Uh, employment um, uh, um, uh, employment generation um, institutions is an employment facilitation institutions. What I mean by that, um, the civil service should be efficient enough so that they create jobs outside the civil service. Because if you don't do that and everybody wants to go and work in the, within the government, that's why you have um, uh, nepotism, that's why we'll have uh, people uh, electing, um, uh, employing people based on uh, maybe the favoritism, favor the favoritism that they want uh, uh, to, to do, or because I'm part of your party, so I'm going to employ. You. Um, he has to instill the merit meritocracy system in the civil service because the civil service is where everybody will take a reference from. So um, uh, there's a lot of uh, reforms that has to be done. I, um, I had recently he increased salaries. Um, by 50 percent, I don't have uh, the, the amount. Yeah, but taxes yes. are also increased. Yes. So mm -hmm. tax, taxes <coughs> also increased. So um, what I would have expected for him is to really look at how to increase it. The people at the bottom should be increased more than mm, the, the great ones. Yes, and the, the great ones. Mm. I I said this to I said this in one of my radio interviews that I gave a, a security officer a lift from uh, traffic light to Senegal, but he was he could not afford to 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 to, the, to get the public transport. So when he entered, uh, we chatted and I asked him, how much do you earn? He said, about 1,500. And he said, Papa, 1,500, how, how can I not be corrupt? If I buy oh. a bag, yes, if really? I buy a bag of rice for 1,000, 1,002, and then um, I have to pay the school fees of my kids, I have to leave the bus there. I sometimes go to office, I don't even eat. The first person who comes to my office, ask, uh, and then they will be. And if I'm in, the, in, in, in traffic, I will have to ask people to help. Mm -hmm. So that is a problem. Until and unless that um, uh, s normal person in the streets cannot sustain himself, at the minimal, will continue to have corruptions. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, that's something we have to uh, address. And uh, by increasing the, 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 um, what's it called again, the salary by 50%, it's not the answer. We have to look at other, inf uh, other um, uh, uh, factors that will make somebody comfortable. Um, why not reduce the, uh, the, the fuel price? Why not um, change the from this um, uh, diesel that we diesel fuel we use in the generators? Why can't we um, invest more in renewable energy? Mm -hmm. Why can't we bring the tax rate down so that everybody will pay taxes, but then the imp the penalties will be higher? Why can't we digitalize um, all the systems? So there are so many other things that will um, um, that will ha um, have an impact on the food basket. Why can't we make the ID card and the drivers uh, ID card and the uh, voters card one? Why, do, why can't we do it? So those things are hidden costs that people have to incur. And uh, why can't we have um, a, 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 a transportation network that will uh, reduce the cost of transportation? So as a leader, as, um, as a country, we have to prioritize. We cannot implement all of it in once. So we prioritize. Um, uh, the first thing is that Dunabi. 
uh, people have to be comfortable. People have to be able to afford the, the, the at least two three <coughs> yeah, to feed themselves, and then the rest will come. And that this will only happen if we c do a, a continuous education. If we invest in infrastructure, if we because if you invest in infras infrastructure now, a food if a, if a woman sells um, uh, vegetables in Basse, okay, and knows that the prices is high in Comba, and the transportation network is efficient. He would take hundred dollars and invest to bring those goods into the area of, of, of demand. Right. So it, 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 uh, it does, there will be equilibrium in price. So those are some things that we need. We need to have a vision. We we, we we have the ingredients. The country is small. It's not overpopulated. Uh, we have the natural resources. We have the brains. But now, how do we make? How do we, uh, bring them together so that? That's an output that is uh, that will be a benefit everybody. Talking about the current government, the party that you lead now, PPP, was part of the those that came together to form a coalition, yeah. you know, uh, to, to 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 push in uh, President Barrow to lead, and then eventually became the winner. The, I hate to talk about this, but now that you are <laughs> flag bearer, I will call it uh, the famous three years, and you address him saying your brother. You know him to be a man of his words. I've, yes. I've, I've followed that. Um, mm. What do you make of these three years, five years? Thing? Um, now I'm talking as a party leader. Um, mm. We had a sign, we signed the MOU for three years, and at the end of the three years, we out, and mm. we out of the co coalition, and then uh, we will um, reconvene again and uh, get ready for the next presidential elections. And up to the uh, end of the three years, if he needs our service, we will definitely uh, want uh, will come in and help. We already have one of our ministers there, so um, we, are, we are here and uh, the coalition is an agreement. We will uh, continue to work with him and if he needs us. But at the end of the three years, we are out of the um, uh, agreement because that was an MOU signed. Now for him to stay three years or five years really is up to him uh, as, a, as a president uh, to decide. And um, yes, I know him as, a, as an individual person. And, uh, but that's totally different from uh, the politics that uh, we are talking about now. Mm. What do you mean is different? It's the politics person that you know that you know lives yeah. by his words. So yeah. Definitely, you know? yeah. And yeah. he has not. Uh, he um, uh, he he has not. Um, uh, co uh, maybe he came out to say that he was going to continue with three uh, with the five years. Mm. But let's wait till the end of the three years and see what statement he's going to make. Uh, whether he's saying he's, he's going to say, okay, I've had enough. I'm uh, I'm out, or he's going to continue with the uh, with another. Well, I guess you've seen the develop national yes. development plan, yes. 2021. That's five years. <laughs> what I need to tell people is mm. that. Leaders, we have to understand one thing. No single human being will complete, complete all his development agenda or her development agenda. It's not possible. Mm. Even human beings in your homes, you plan and then you will implement some and the rest, you will die and leave it behind and your kids will implement. So until unless we stop saying that I have not completed uh, all the, all, uh, everything that I want to do, we'll continue to have leaders that will clinch onto power. Okay. You do your quota and hand the baton to the next person. Simple. If we have that mentality, the leaders will start to be accountable to the people. They'll so that I have five years, I have three years, I have ten years to implement what I can, and I move on. And leadership, you enjoy it after the, your tenure. If you look at the, uh, in the West, uh, in the, it's when they leave the, uh, the offices, that's when they start putting on weight, that's when they start being mm -hmm. happy. Uh, to be head of an institution or to lead is it's tough. Stressful. It's yeah. stressful, uh, and uh, you have to make some tough decisions. Sometimes the tough decisions uh, will will backfire, and they will not be in what uh, they will not come out the way you wanted it. So let leaders understand that they are not there forever. The only thing that's that permanent is death. Somebody told me an old uh, old man is that there are two two things in life, the truth and and uh, and 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 and, uh, and the uh, untruth and uh, lies. Two things. You either say the truth and continue to, to, to be respected, or you lie and people will come back to you and say, uh, and say that you lied and then you'll be disrespected. With the current trend going on within uh, his government, what would you advise him to stick to if you were to advise him? Three uh, or what? five? Uh, three to me, uh, as a party leader, I'll tell him three years. Okay. He, is, he, gets, he gets out of the government, he has a good legacy, he has started national the, the national development plan is up and running. He, the, 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 the information, the, the some of the things that he said he was going to do, he has started doing them already. So for him, he get, goes out and then he'll get the Mo, Bra Mo Ibrahim uh, 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 Award and then he goes and enjoy, enjoy himself. Mm. Being a leader is difficult, it's really difficult and um, I would, that's the advice I have for him. But maybe he has different ag agenda and um, I wish him luck. But uh, the PPP uh, will, uh, at the end of the um, three years, will be out. You think PPP and other political parties that are in the country are ready for elections? Come three years? 
No, it's not the, only the PPP and the other political parties. Mm. Are Gambians ready? Because we all are serving Gambians. And uh, the executive in the parties and may, will not be more than 100 or 200. Mm. If the people, people on the ground, are they ready? And uh, for, 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 for election to happen next year, uh, at the end of next year, if yes, then definitely we are ready. Okay. Um, interesting. Papa Njai, uh, leader of the uh, People's Progressive Party. Well, before I take a leave of you, Papa, um, well, a lot of things have been happening, as you rightly mentioned, the commission, you know, and where do you see the Gambia heading to in the next, you know, maybe two years, let's say? Uh, the next two years is going to be rough uh, because um, if you bring up old wounds, uh, a lot of some some the victims will be will will, will say a finance that's a closure, but the people that uh, the, that that victimize the people will also say okay listen, um, I did it and because of ABC I did it so um, uh, there'll be a lot of a healing process and the healing process will not just be overnight, and uh, the people that are victims also will want to be compensated. Do we have the funds to do that? Um, why would I come out and talk about the, the pains that I've gone through if I'm not compensated? So yes, that's, that would be a lot of, uh, that, that, that would be a lot of um, a a rough riding for the next two years. And um, I think um, President Barrow eventually will, uh, be, will, be, will, will, will focus on some of the things that uh, he thinks uh, will, will help Gambit develop. Um, uh, and which is that he has to invest in more in the uh, creating employment for the young people, not just seminars and workshops, which I have as Africans were good at so mm. real uh, projects um, uh, whereby the young people will see themselves to be part of um, uh, de development agenda but um, uh, and uh, now that it's a democratic country everybody has a chance to to ex express themselves and, uh, and the media are holding us more accountable there'll be a lot of um, uh, a, a lot a lot of uh, awareness creation because now the media will not let anybody go scot-free if you misbehaves or uh, a prom you make a promise and you do not deliver. So it's interesting times, but um, we, are, we are hopeful that um, things will get better, but uh, eventually it will, it will, but not in the next two years. I will come to the issue of the media uh, shortly, but uh, if I'm, I'm still going to be on the commission. So um, is Gambia ready for the TRRC? Mm. Um, every single country has their own story to tell. Mm. Uh, with the size of the Gambia, I will ready. Um, I, I'm not an expert. But um, I know people want what they want closure. Uh, closure in a, is it in the sense of uh, openly talking about your problem, uh, your, 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 the pain that you went through, or is it um, uh, behind closed doors? Um, that is not for me to say. But I know that there will be a lot of pain. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of people will be exposed who we all thought they were saints, and um, that is also going to change the dynamics of um, of, uh, of, of of the game as we move forward. But also, it's a lesson. Uh, that um, we will never allow such a um, uh, 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 dictatorial um, uh, um, uh, control of the government again in, in, in our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, people are being educated now and um, they know that uh, if anybody wants to take those rights away from them, they'll come up and demonstrate and they will ask for uh, system change and also government change. Talking about social media, the president himself said, you know, social media played a great role in, in, in the change that we are all enjoying right now. Um, your take on social media now that they're saying it's a challenge to them, particularly this government. Um, I think, uh, I think to them, to me, I, f I want to say that was a that was a mistake to say that it's a challenge to them, because the the the, the social media was one of the um, um, uh, tools that really helped people to be aware of of what was going on in the Gambia and. Um, which actually should be promoted more uh, because um, now um, uh, public officials will be held accountable, uh, politicians will be held accountable, uh, even individuals will be ha held accountable through to, to social media, through journalism, through the media. So it's, it's a good thing because uh, if you're not, if you don't, if you think that you're not being held accountable, you might you might um, uh, do things wrongly. So social media, they they're here to stay, and um, what I just want to let people know that. Um, Social media also can be a, a hindrance in the sense that um, if the wrong person sits and just criticizes somebody and uh, it goes viral, what do we need to do? Uh, the, the person that feels that, that, that was offended should also be able to get up and say, okay, listen, this is what they said to me and this is the real story and then the dialogue. So until and unless we have those two sides, sometimes it will cause more harm in the short run 
uh, and then eventually the people, the person that's been hurt, will also uh, in turn get up and then start to um, uh, mm. counteract the, 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 the claim. But the internet um, uh, should be one of the things that will promote democracy in the Gambia. Uh, the journalism also, journalists should also uh, know that uh, they have a right to verification of information. They have a right, uh, they, they have a, a duty to verify information and source of information uh, before they publish it. Talking of social media, the diaspora also plays a great role now that they are advocating for being given the voting rights. Uh, are you ready to read them out? Um, in our new constitution, we will uh, make sure that the diaspora are that's uh, they're, they're well represented in our uh, in the constitution and um, uh, we'll make sure that they sit in some of our, um, our committees and uh, we'll also make sure that um, uh, they eventually they will they will have voting rights in our, uh, in some of our, our, our elections so for now i can talk about our, our, our constitution which is what governs us so we will make them uh, uh, to be part of the, of the whole process and also, not only that, uh, we'll also give more prominent prominent roles to uh, to young people and also to people, the different able persons, so that there will be a quota in the in the in the constitution whereby they will be part of the system. And of course, women. And uh, there are a lot of con there are a lot of constitution that mention women, but their specific role in the constitution has to be clearly spelled out. They should be would, would, should they have a, a quota system, so that if you elect ten men, ten uh, ten men at least. If you elect ten positions, at least three or four or five of the positions should be given to women. So that is something that, as a team, we we'll look at it. Gen gender. Yes. If 2021 elections approaches and uh, Gambians have tested coalition, mm -hmm. we see how you know <laughs> nice it was. Um, is the PPP ready to join another force? You know, to come for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Gambia will be led by a coalition uh, a government. Really? Yes. Uh, because uh, if you look at the dynamics, um, no single party will have the majority. And uh, we learned a lot from the past coalition. Uh, and uh, next time, the coalition agreement will be a bit more secure, a, a little more clearer, so that um, when you enter, enter into a coalition agreement, uh, we know, okay, these are things I will, I will get if uh, we win. So, yes, coalition government for the next 5, 10, 20 years. Papa Njai, finally, um, what message will you have for those watching, those that are, of course, perhaps heard about the PPP, wants to join, but they don't know how? Why are you the right person? Um, it's not about Papanjai, it's about the structures. Um, uh, what I would just want to let uh, the listeners know that, um, and the viewers, um, that uh, PPP, we are here to, we are ready to reach out to the younger population. We, uh, we have a history, and a history that was very rich in, the, um, in, in, in g helping the Gambia. So we'll blend the history of the PPP with the new generation of uh, visionary leadership that will uh, propel the PPP to the next 20, 20, 2021 elections. So come listen to us and um, uh, we are not saying that you should join, join the PPP without listening to us. Listen to us and um, after listening to us, you will definitely know that we're the party to be, to, 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 to be part of and then we will make sure that the party is very modern, very, uh, very uh, engaging and we will uh, make sure that we listen to the views of the people and then based on that we will uh, create our uh, development agenda so that everybody will see themselves in that development agenda. But on a final note, I just want to thank you and um, to also thank the media house, houses because there's, there's an explosion of media houses in Gambia, and uh, which is good, which is good for democracy, which is good for uh, holding people accountable. I just want to congratulate all of you for a job well done. Mohamed Papanjai, Secretary General and leader of the People's Progressive Party, uh, PPP. Well, viewers and listeners, of course, those monitoring us on 103.3, that's all we've got for you in today's edition of The Viewpoint. I've been your host, Babu Karsi. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.